Hey there everyone, welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be teaching you the quickest and simplest way to get 86 box up and running on Windows 10 and Windows 11. So for now I'm going to be using a fresh user account Windows 10 and you head on over to the 86 box GitHub page, link's going to be in the video description. Then you look down here, instead of the 86 box manager, which I already covered like twice on the Windows 10 and Windows 11 video, this time we're going to be using Winbox for 86 box by the CBA, which is a brand new, I mean, not so brand new anymore. I took a lot of time to cover it. It's, it's like um, half a year old already, but anyway. So this is actually currently the simplest way to get 86 box up and running. It's crazy simple. You don't have to know anything. You don't have to deal with ROMs. It does everything for you. It's just, it, it's amazing. And I'm going to be showing you how quick it is to actually get it up and running and, you know, begin installing the operating systems and stuff. It's fantastic. So you click here on releases 1.10, you download the executable or the seven zip. It doesn't matter for this one. We're going to be using the executable because it's just more convenient. And once it's done downloading any moment now, Okay, it's done. So you can finally run it. It's going to show Windows protected your PC because it's not signed, but it's not a virus. It's completely fine, completely safe. The source code is here. So if you have any questions, you, if you have an understanding, obviously, you can go to the source code and you're going to see by yourself that it's completely safe. And you click on run anyway. And that's quite what it's going to be doing. It's going to be running anyway. So you install for all users or just for yourself. I'm going to be installing just for myself. Uh, it has language support. So we have German, Italian. What is that? I think that's Hungarian. I'm not really sure, but I think it is. And Portuguese. We're going to be using English for this one. Then, yeah, I accept it. Even though I didn't re really read it or anything. Then you install, you need 51.7 megabytes of space, and then you can create desktop shortcut or not. I'm going to be creating one just for convenience and you click on install. And uh, as simple as that, it's installed. And then you can finally launch Winbox, but that's not, that's not quite ready yet. There's something else that, ooh, well, that's strange. I, I, I turned it to use English, but it refused, even though my OS is actually set to English for some reason, maybe via the IP or the computer's location. I'm not sure. It's just trying to use Portuguese. Oh, it's okay. It just says it didn't detect an installed version of 86 box where it should be located at because it has like, it creates a folder for 86 box. And then obviously there's nothing there. First time you install it. And it asks if you want to download and install the latest version, which obviously is what we want. So you click on yes, and it's going to do just that. It downloads straight out of Jenkins, which is the platform that 86 box uses to deliver the latest versions. Out of builds actually for Linux, for Windows, for Mac, and so on. And uh, there you go. That's about it. We're pretty much ready at that point. I'm just going to change the language to English so that uh, we can, oh, well, that's confusing. It says it's the standard language, but I'm using English, as you can see, rain and even the date scheme. It's also US standard. I, I don't know why that happens, but here we go. English, and once we click OK, it doesn't even require restart. Language is changed, and then we can finally go to setting up your first machine. So for that, you're going to be clicking on no machine. It's pretty much like VirtualBox, VMware. Uh, even the UI itself is pretty similar. I mean, which is very convenient, actually. It's pretty cool. I mean, if you compare that to 86 box manager in terms of the visual niceties, it's, it's a lot friendlier. I mean, if you're no to the whole thing and you don't know quite what you're doing, it can be very handy. And even if you are actually you know, experience there can be like, uh, it can facilitate things a lot because it has preset machines and stuff. So you don't actually have to go like, oh, does this motherboard work well with the CPU and this RAM combination, this disk size, it has everything 
just like set up for you you just click and bingo and usually the profile like matches one to one with the real machine so you're gonna get all the specs that the real thing had so you're gonna have like no problems whatsoever while installing old operating systems and stuff because it's gonna be just like the machine that it's meant to replicate which i find amazing anyway you click on next then you set up a name for the machine i'm gonna be calling it test and then you can change where you're gonna save it. I'm gonna just use the standard location, it doesn't really matter. And then here is where you can set up a template for the machine. So you have Compaq, you have IBM, Olivetti, Packard Bell, Tandy, and Toshiba. Uh, or you can create a template free, which is advanced, which I've already covered because it's pretty much the same 86 box uh, UI from there on if you click on the template free one. So that's already covered. Uh, we're going to go with an IBM template. I'm going to go with the P60, the value point P60. It even say, says what it supports. So Windows 95, Windows 3, OS2 Warp, OS2 and Linux. So as you can see, if you roll through the list, it, it lists everything it can actually run. So you can have a sort of baseline of what you, the machine targets in terms of operating systems. Obviously, you can, you know, try and run like windows 95 on this one even though it doesn't say it supports it but technically you know packs enough power to 486 but it gives you a baseline so you kind of you know have your sort of orientation what, what you want to go for so you want a windows 95 so p60 there you go and so it goes that's essentially um the idea behind it so you click on next and then this is the cool part, which allows you to set CD-ROM, uh, you know, all the usual stuff, but it's more simplified because usually with the standard 86 box, you have to pick all of that manually. And here it, it kind of does it for you. So if the machine, the real life machine has a CD-ROM drive, it, it does come with the CD-ROM drive already preset. And this size, just like the real thing, you can obviously modify it as you wish. You can use the raw disk image, which which takes the whole space right away. You can use VHD, which is dynamic. And uh, if you watch my previous 86 box videos or any VMware videos for the matter, I already talk a little bit about dynamic disks, which is pretty cool because it expands dynamically. So if it's like a 10 gigabyte drive, it's not gonna take 10 gigabytes right away. It's gonna expand as, as you add stuff into it. So it's like a, a bag, a plastic bag. It doesn't take a lot of volume initially. And as you feel, if you put stuff in, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's essentially the concept, a dynamically expanding disk. It's gonna start small, like few kilobytes. And as you add stuff, it grows dynamically, which is pretty handy because it doesn't take a lot of space. And let's be honest, I mean, it does compromise speed a little bit when we're talking about old machines. So. You know, it's still going to be faster than, than IDE anyway, so it doesn't really matter. You can go full on dynamic and it's going to save you a lot of space if you think about it. So dynamic it is, and then you can customize the size it's going to take. And it's going to do the rest of it automatically, like the headers and such. It just kind of does it for you, which is pretty handy. I'm going to keep it at the standard size, so I'm not going to be changing that, but it does let you change all the stuff and even print the settings if you wish so it does all the geometry and stuff it's pretty handy you click on next and then it says everything is ready and once you click on next oh oh never mind <laughs> it was like did it crash no it didn't crash here here it is it even shows the screenshots if you take any so you're going to be able to browse through your screenshots here's the display settings which it's a preset so 16 megabits of ram the Pentium 16 megahertz, audio sound blaster, the storage settings that we already put in, the network card, which is going to match the real life counterpart, mouse and ports and so on. And you even have a way to monitor usage, CPU and memory in here on the performance. There's a graph so you can compare which machine is using more of your CPU, which one is not. And it kind of saves it. So even if the machine is off, you can have like your baseline. So if you want to compare like, oh, which one does take more for my, for my uh, CPU? Is it the P5? Is it the 486? Is it the 386? It's going to be plotting the graph here so that you can actually see all of that even after it's off, which I find very nifty. It's pretty cool. 
So now it's all about running the machine in it. So you click on start and it's going to do just that. It's going to run the machine. And as you can see, it works flawlessly. Uh, cool thing about uh, this Winbox is that it downloads 86 box, the latest build, and it does download the latest ROM set. So you don't have to fetch the ROMs, which is very handy. It's just with one click, one download, one single download, it gets everything that you could ever need and it's all ready to go. Then you just gotta, you know, get the images and the floppies if you want to install something older or the CD-ROMs. Anyway, you know, from there on, it's up to your own creativity, cre creativity what you want to do with it. If you want to, you know, install Windows 98, 95, doesn't really matter. Windows 3, you know, the sky's the limit. The point is, it's pretty simple. It's quick. And look at that. It shows in real time. CPU, the memory. Then if you look at the performance graph, it's going to be showing in real time as well. And the RAM, it's not using nothing because it's 16 megabytes. It's not going to be taking much of my machine. But anyway, it's pretty cool that you can actually see all of that in real time. It's amazing to run some comparisons and stuff. It's handy as handy as you can possibly get. Anyway, uh, yeah, I guess that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys could get proper understanding of how it works. If you guys have any questions, the comment section is right down below. Don't be shy. I and uh, obviously feedback's much appreciated as well. So if you guys have any any sort of feedback, we're more than welcome. So yeah, I think that's it for now. If you guys want more videos, more Winbox videos, maybe you know actually setting up a machine with with an operating system, so showing the, the whole thing, like the install process and stuff. You know, just just let me know, and certainly I'm gonna bring, you know. But yeah, that's about it. Y'all take care, stay safe, and see you guys in the next one.